This is 5 and 10 from Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert, as you can see, working from Studio G again today. That's uh, our home studio, of course, as COVID-19 has even reached into our little corner of the Ozarks. Now, we're all fine, Sharon and I, healthy and well, everyone at Skywatch TV well, uh, but there have been cases now reported in our county, and as a precaution, Tom Warren has asked us to do as much as we can from home. So for the next couple of weeks, at least you'll be seeing more of this room than the Skywatch TV studio, uh, but that's okay. The Lord has blessed us with the equipment and the technology to make this happen, and so uh, we are here with you today. In fact, we're using this technology today to reach across the ocean to our good friend who is on the ground in Ground Zero, as our friend Pastor Carl Gallops would call it. He is the man behind Messiah of Israel Ministries. You'll find his ministry online, zevporetministries.com. And we welcome from Tel Aviv, Messianic Rabbi Zev Porat. Zev, it's good to see you again, brother. Good to see you again, brother. It's an honor to be here. This uh, has been an interesting time, and, and things have really changed quite a lot here in the last uh, 30 days or so. We had expected to see you at the end of this month as part of a research trip. Uh, obviously, that's not going to happen now, at least not uh, when we thought it would. Um, but we're seeing, as this, uh, as this virus continues to spread across the world, spreading in Israel, spreading here in the United States, uh, just curious as to how this is affecting things in Israel, both uh, for you on the ground... Uh, and I ask that because we've heard reports coming from the church in China, and I know you've got some contacts with the underground church there as well, that uh, COVID-19 is actually opening some doors for ministry. How has this been affecting your work? Well, it's affecting the whole world. But, you know, you mentioned about you uh, having to meet us here in Israel. And I think that uh, I want to touch a little bit on that because we make a lot of plans, and it's good to make plans, ministry plans. But I think God is showing, allowing this evil to happen in order to show us that you can make all the plans you want, but things can change overnight. Right. And I think it's important for us to realize that as we're in the end times, getting closer to the second coming of Jesus Yeshua, we need to recognize we don't have any time because things can just flip and change in, in overnight. As, as we spoke uh, via email, the world has turned upside down. And I think the world has turned upside down also here in Israel. What you're seeing in America, you're seeing also in Israel, people are panicking. Uh, people don't know, uh, you know what's going to be tomorrow. But having said that, the doors in Israel have been opened for the gospel to go forth because I think many, many people who lost hope in God, who lost faith in God, even here in Israel, our, our ministry is in position in a place to show them who God is, that it's Yeshua the Messiah. And they're listening right now in the midst of this coronavirus. So God is using this for good. Uh, Israel has been uh, quarantined most of the country. For over over 70 percent of the country has to stay home. Ten percent of the country can go to work, you know, basic uh, jobs, uh, police, uh, you know, people that are working in jobs that are, you know, humanitarian jobs uh, can be opened, but at a very low rate. The police are checking the highways day and night and you have to have a pass, a license to go out. You can't just go out unless you're going in your neighborhood to a supermarket. Well, they're looking for volunteers to give money to give uh, food uh, to Holocaust survivors to oh, sure. widows, to just elderly people that can't leave the house because we're so vulnerable to this virus. And so our ministry called up uh, the uh, municipality and said, we want to volunteer for this. Well, we called as, not as the ministry, but as, you know, as Zev, as Ronan, as the people in the ministry. And they're so, so, so tight, they don't have time to do a background check. And they said, okay, we're giving you the license. So we have license to travel in Israel on the highways, bring food to people, and in the midst of it, preach the gospel even to the police that stop us on the way and say, where are you going? Where is your where is your license to go out right now? We show them this and have an opportunity to share with them and to share with their loved ones and even give some policemen some masks that because uh, they were asking, do you have any extra masks? Sure, we'll give you some masks because, you know, praise God, the uh, the, the Chinese church, you mentioned the Chinese church, were, were able to send thousands upon thousands of masks to Israel to really? bless the people. They sent it to our ministry. So we're able to give it to people, give it to the police, hand it out to people. And in the midst of, of giving out these uh, masks, we're able to share the gospel. So God is using this coronavirus. Uh, he's not, uh, God is not the one who orchestrated the coronor, uh, coronavirus, but God can allow it. He knew it's going to happen. It didn't take God by surprise. Let's put it that way. Sure. God knew what's going to happen. And God's using it now for good. So we're looking at the good in, in, in this evil world and how to, 
how to preach Jesus. Th that's really remarkable because the Chinese church, as you know better than we do, you know, your lovely life, wife Lin is, is from China, th that uh, th they have really endured persecution that, that we in the West, uh, you know, just really, we don't have a frame of reference to understand what they've been going through for years, under, especially in the recent years. I've heard from a couple of missionaries in China that uh, ever, since President Xi took power, um, things have gotten more difficult for the church in China. And uh, even in Wuhan, which was the center of, of this outbreak, uh, they have found opportunities to uh, witness, to share, to show the love of Jesus Christ at a time when people are afraid and concerned. But I think that's really remarkable that the church in China is turning around and blessing your ministry in Israel by sending the, the uh, protective gear for you to bless God's people, the Jews. Uh, I think that's an incredible story. It's incredible because just last night on the Israeli news, uh, the uh, the health department of Israel announced, okay, we, we recommend that everyone wear a mask when they go out. They didn't say that last month. They're saying it now. Now is the recommendation. As soon as the masks arrive to Israel, it's not going to be a recommendation anymore. It's probably going to be, you know, the law. You need to go out with a mask. And there's not enough masks. And the masks that they do have in Israel, they're overpricing them at crazy prices. They're selling here twenty to twenty-five dollars a mask in the pharmacy, and people are buying it just for one mask. I mean, they're just abusing uh, the whole system on the black market here. So the Chinese church is recognizing it. They've been, they've gone through it. They they needed masks themselves. Now they have enough masks. They're sending them to Israel, and it's it's beautiful to see uh, how the body is blessing each other. And we also have an opportunity to tell the the people in Israel, a lot of people in Israel are saying, oh, you know, this thing started in Wuhan and, and, you know, it started from a bat. It may well have started out from a bat. We don't know. Right. But it kind of put a little bit anger in some of the people here in Israel that are saying, you know, towards the Chinese people, a little mm -hmm. bit. You know, they had a, a, a situation in Tiberias last month where there was a Chinese uh, a boy that was actually born here in Israel that got beat up in the street. Uh, because they thought, you know, you're responsible for what's happening. Yeah, yeah. So what, right now, God is using the Chinese congregation in order to say, wait a minute, these Chinese people love you. They're sending you the masks. So that's even opening, uh, you know, the, the restoration between in that aspect as well, too. And the Orthodox city of Mnebrak, where I grew up as a boy, yes. right now they're having serious problems there with that. They're, they don't want to get quarantined, and they're not obedient to, to the to the news. Well, one of the reasons they're not obedient to the news, Derek, is because they don't have news. They don't have television. Right, right. They don't have newspapers. They live in their own communities. And right now, the rabbis are the ones who are going out and telling the people, you need to stay in your home. Otherwise, you're going to, you know, you're going to die. It's kind of difficult for them to stay in their home. If you have eight or 10 kids in a very small apartment, how do you keep the people at home? But having said that, one of the main rabbis in Bnei Brak today, his wife passed away yesterday from oh. the coronavirus. That triggered a big, uh, a big warning in the community. So they're going in their homes right now. Uh, our ministry has gone into that city uh, and preached the gospel to them and brought them a lot of masks and, uh, and, and food vouchers and things like that. So uh, hopefully through this, they'll come to know Messiah Yeshua. Praise God. Now, I, I noticed that story because I remember that that is your hometown. And uh, the story was about how serious the, uh, the virus has spread through that community. It's, it's really a, a hotbed in Israel, a center for the outbreak of B'nai Brak. Um, how is your reception different when you go back now with masks and food and, uh, and the gospel compared to when you went home before? Well, first of all, I'm going in with a mask right now because they require me to. So right, they don't, right. not everybody recognizes me so easy. <laughs> okay, that's, all number, right. <laughs> that's number one. Number two, <laughs> so that, that's helpful. But we're able to get into the homes and bring them boxes of food. And some people food vouchers, some boxes of food. Uh, and, and able to, uh, to gently to share the love of Yeshua, of Jesus. Because they do ask us, you know, why are you doing this? What organization are you coming from? We're saying we're not coming from any organization. We're coming from the God of Abraham, Isaacs, and Jacob. Do you want to know who he is? Yeah. And this yeah. opens the door. You know, when Pete, it's very hard for people to see God in a storm, but it's when they often call out to God. You know, you think about the story of uh, uh, the account in the Bible where Jesus walks in the water. They didn't recognize him because it was a storm. Mm -hmm. It's hard to recognize God in the storm. Hmm. But I think if we bring it out, this is where 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 the gospel can go forth. Having said that, 
the Bible is clear. We're not to have a spirit of fear. The Bible says in, in 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. And I think that's what the body right now needs to do is use this opportunity to be a witness wherever you are, wherever God has positioned you to be. Amen. And uh, from the beginning of time, knowing the end from the beginning, he chose you, me, and all of the people hearing or seeing this message to be alive at this time, in this hour, and for this purpose. Uh, one final question, uh, Zev, because uh, this was kind of a surprise last week as we just get back to the politics, sort of the mundane uh, news of the day. Benny Gantz broke up the Blue and White Alliance to join the unity government with Benjamin Netanyahu in the Likud party. Uh, Gantz will, has been sworn in now as the Speaker of the Knesset, and the reports are that uh, uh, Mr. Netanyahu will serve as Prime Minister for 18 months, and then Mr. Gantz will take over for the remaining two and a half years of the four-year Knesset session. Uh, how big of a surprise was it, and uh, do you think that Mr. Netanyahu has maybe more up his sleeve than the media has reported so far? Well, everybody in Israel, well, not everybody, 80% of the people in Israel know he has something up his sleeve. <laughs> he's not going to allow Gantz to be the prime minister. He's gonna, he has enough time to uh, basically uh, either throw Gantz out or have him thrown out. And that's what he's going to do. He's, what he did right now was, in, in the political eyes, brilliant, because he actually moved Gantz away from the blue and white. So the people in, in the blue and white are very upset with him, if it's yeah. Lapid and the other people. So he can't return to them. They'll never believe him. So he's he's at a point right now that he can't go back and he can't really uh, form a, a government with Netanyahu, not the way he wants to. And Netanyahu said, I'll give you, uh, you know, good positions, good seats. It looks like it's going to be a large parliament, 34 seats. But having said that, um, Gantz is not getting the positions he wants. And there is a big argument about it right now. Netanyahu, uh, for him, he doesn't care because his year and a half doesn't start until this uh, signature doesn't happen. Uh, most people don't think it's going to happen before Passover. It's probably going to happen after, uh, if it even happens. Mm -hmm. He has uh, time till next week to, uh, he has a mandate from the president of Israel uh, to form his government. His, it, Netanyahu is waiting for that mandate, mandate to finish in order to gain more power over against. Most people think it's, uh, I can't use a different word, it's a dirty trick. Mm. <laughs> Interesting. Well, we'll watch what happens with great interest. Uh, Passover begins uh, next Wednesday, April 8th. How will these uh, restrictions on movement in Israel affect the Passover? Well, Benjamin Netanyahu said that he, he doesn't want people going out for the Passover Seder. He wants some people to stay at home, uh, use Zoom, use Skype uh, to, you know, to have dinner with your families. What he's saying is uh, the family members should be the ones that are home. You don't go to your grandparents, don't go, you don't move around. So it's going to be a different Passover. Hopefully, our ministry is going to have an opportunity via Skype and via Zoom to reach many, many people during this Passover season. I think it's a time where God is going to speak to the people, where people are going to start to see that, you know, stop putting your, uh, your trust in the stock market or in your work or in the bank. It's time to put your trust in God because you, you see that overnight, just in one night, this thing, the world has turned over. Yes. Uh, rabbi Zev Porat works from Tel Aviv. He's a Messianic rabbi. Messiah of Israel Ministries is his ministry. His website is zevporatministries.com. There will be a link in the description below this video. You'll sa see links to his YouTube channel there so you can get his reports from Israel. He also appears regularly on Freedom Friday with our good friend, Pastor Carl Gallops. He's also very kindly linked to some of our past interviews at Skywatch TV there at his website. Again, that's Zev Porat Ministries. Uh, Zev, Sorry we won't see you this month, but uh, we pray that the October tour will be uh, uh, still uh, on schedule. Uh, no changes in that yet. Uh, that We'll have more information in a couple of weeks on that. Uh, we'll tell you more about that after the break here. But uh, Zev, thanks for your time today, and uh, may God protect you, your wife, and your ministry. Thank you, and keep up the great work of uh, reaching the gospel. God, God is not going to give us a spirit of fear. We're going to continue to preach no matter what. Amen. Thank you for watching as we keep watch. I'm Derek Gilbert, and this is 5 in 10 from Skywatch TV.